What's wrong with American medicine? American medicine is in a lot of trouble. Longer waiting times, shorter visits, more paperwork, higher costs, and nothing really seems to get better. In this video, I'll break down what is wrong with American medicine. Before we get started, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to share and like this video. Now, let's get going. So first of all, let's start with the positive. The United States of America has some of the world's most exceptional physicians, some of the best medical schools in the world, and definitely some of the best training programs for physician specialties, meaning residencies and fellowships. Also, the United States has the most top-notch medical facilities in the world, the best hospitals in the world, and also a staggering array of smaller private practice clinics. The United States is the world leader in medical innovation and technology, so we have access to the best testing and diagnostic technology, pharmaceuticals, and medical intervention therapeutic technology. Plus, the United States is flush with cash, so everything is copacetic, right? Not quite. American medicine, or what is now called healthcare, which is a colloquial term for modern managed medicine, is not doing well. It is actually in trouble, and the situation is getting worse. Why is that? Well, American doctors, which are inarguably at the center of medicine, along with their patients, are under attack. Attack, you say? Isn't that dramatic? Well, yes, it is dramatic, and it's getting worse. But who or what is attacking American physicians and their patients? In one word, government. And in two words, government regulation. So let's look at pay. Since the 1960s, with the inception of Medicare, the payments for medical goods and services has been gradually overtaken by government agencies. Medicare and Medicaid, which centrally determine what a doctor gets paid for his or her services. And then in 2010, with the implementation of the Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare, the American government mandated that Americans get health care insurance, tying many more millions of Americans to managed health care. Insurance companies conspired with the government that everybody must be forced to get their services and in return agreed to many concessions, one of which was agreeing to getting rid of the pre-existing conditions as a consideration for coverage. This agreement nullified the insurance companies' roles as insurance companies and retooled them into middlemen which administer the provision of medical goods and services in collaboration with the government. This dramatically expanded the influence of so-called insurance carriers on the pay of doctors as more patients opted to go that route and now more doctors were beholden to insurance companies and what they agreed to pay doctors. Now the rates of insurance companies are arbitrarily determined, much like Medicare. In fact, they're indexed by Medicare rates, which are also determined arbitrarily. While physicians have become increasingly beholden to Medicare and the insurance companies which relied on Medicare to determine the rates of payment for physicians, which made them effectively government employees or really more like subcontractors, Medicare has been gradually decreasing the pay for physicians. What? Decrease? Expenses are increasing. Rent, utilities, medical supplies and commodities, payroll for other employees whose payment does have to keep up with inflation. Those are all increasing. But the centrally determined pay for doctors has been gradually decreasing. You heard it right. You must be asking yourself, well, aren't physicians rich and aren't they represented by the best of the brightest lobbyists out there? Well, not really. Organizations that claim to represent physicians have been overseeing this very trend that I'm talking about from the sidelines or actually involved in the boardroom meetings with government officials and have virtually done nothing to reverse this trend. Doctors also not permitted to bargain with insurance companies due to various antitrust laws. So the bottom line is that doctors really have to take what insurance companies give them. In the meantime, the CEOs of insurance companies are doing just fine. What are they doing to deserve those generous paydays? Well, they're making sure that their companies keep as much of your money, give out as few goods and services in return, and pay physicians as little as they can also for their work. So to make the same amount of money as the doctor used to, the doctor simply has to work harder, see more patients, and spend less time with each patient. And that means that they have to fill their schedule with more patients, which creates 
or worsens an acid shortage. But yeah, okay, so work harder. Well, the doctors do work harder and many are actually making it work, but that's not all. With more government and more corporate involvement, these two besties just can't seem to help themselves. And they pile on more work on the backs of physicians and patients, by the way, who are now locked in in business with these guys with increasing leverage. So Medicare and insurance companies feel more free to pile on prior authorizations, which is an arbitrary denial of goods and services to the patient that the physician has to spend time and money to appeal or find an alternative solution which also costs time and money away from you. Merit-based incentive payment system or the MIPS which is a form of bureaucratic busy work making doctors and patients fill out more paperwork, feed more information about themselves into the bureaucracy so that the doctor could actually get paid. Doctors were forced to buy into expensive electronic medical record systems, which are practically a monopoly, extremely clunky, hard to use, with many different operational downsides, which again, take up time and money and distract the doctor from taking care of their patient. And then there are arbitrary educational assignments for doctors to study and be tested about matters that matter to politicians, but have very little to do with their professional lives and their service to their patients. And on top of everything, the doctor actually has to pay for all the things that I listed, either directly out of pocket or in time and resources that the doctor now has to direct to serve those bureaucratic assignments rather than serve their patients. The bloated bureaucracy has been growing and growing over the past few decades, which you've surely noticed even if you can't put your finger on it, and that causes more and more distraction for doctors to take time away from their patients, with doctors being less independent, many burning out, and not being able to take care of their patients properly as they would see fit. And all of this means less doctors, and the doctors who are actually working have less time, money, and resources to do what they were trained to do in the first place, which is practice medicine. If you're a patient in America, you're probably noticing all the things that I talked about or becoming aware of them. I just want you to know one thing. This is not the will of your doctor. This is not how medicine works. This managed medicine model is actually not medicine at all. It is actually bureaucracy managed provision and rationing of medical goods and services. And that means that the bottom line and the final decision on who gets what and what's the best care is really out of your hands and out of your doctor's hands and is actually in the hands of some regulation that was written by unaccountable, disinterested bureaucrats in boardrooms and has virtually nothing to do with you. And this is showing no signs of slowing down. It is compounding and growing. And there doesn't seem to be much political will to unwind this or to do anything about it. So American medicine is in bad shape, but what can we do about it? Well, in a nutshell, we have to reclaim American medicine for patients and their doctors. Some solutions can be in the form of simply rescinding government mandates, coercing physicians to bind to expensive money pits like electronic medical records, for example, or other technology that simply doesn't work. Other solutions would be in the form of simply suspending bureaucratic busy work imposed on doctors, like MIPS, for example, or other mindless data entry assignments that are imposed on doctors and their patients. And yet another solution could be suspending the arbitrary denial of service that is called prior authorization, which is literally practicing medicine without a license and without any accountability by faceless bureaucrats in the insurance companies and in Medicare. Also, Medicare would be good to finally adjust the payment of physicians and tie it to inflation. Now all of these things I just listed are partial solutions and implementation of them across the board would likely get tremendous relief for patients and their doctors. But the ultimate solution would be free market where physicians and patients work out their business without any intermediaries that are simply sucking out the value out of every transaction between a physician and a patient and provide nothing in return. This will leave physicians and patients to practice medicine and heal respectively and do so in the most cost-effective way possible. Let me know what some solutions are to free doctors and their patients from the regulatory shackles in the comments section. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Also, don't forget to share and like this video. Thanks for watching. God bless.